Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's Top 23 Favorite Villains of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This video is a part of a series of videos where I'm covering all the movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I did my reviews for all 23 movies and also ranked them from my favorite to least favorite. So now I'm here to talk about the villains because villains in the MCU is pretty interesting. They have a notorious uh, record of being not very good. <laughs> and it's kind of infamous that Marvel has a villain problem even though it's very good at storytelling and heroes and character stories and all sorts of other things. Uh, there's a lot of times where people say that the villains don't quite match up. So I'm here to rank uh, what I think, what movies I think work with their villains and which ones didn't. So what I did is I chose one villain from each of the 23 movies in the MCU and I ranked it... Uh, from my least favorite to my favorite that is the ones i don't think that worked and the ones that didn't so mainly i would choose the main villain unless uh because but the thing is i can only choose a villain once like for example i can't have thanos on here for both infinity war and in game or i can't have loki on here for both thor and uh avengers so i have to choose a villain for one so if i can't use that i get to the next villain or whatever and that sort of thing if you know what i'm saying so anyway let me get started with my top 23 and my number 23 worst villain this is because this is my bottom of the mcu for me is definitely zemo uh, from Captain America Civil War, and I talked about this a lot, that Zemo, to me, is definitely the worst villain because he's contrived. I don't buy his character. I think the writing around this character is terrible, that a lot of things that don't make sense for the characters, don't make logical sense in real life, just seem to happen uh, because the writer contrived it to happen so that this uh, villain's plan would work, and it just doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense why he didn't just email this video to Captain America if he, his only goal was to get Captain America and Iron Man to fight then he could have just emailed it to them and <laughs> why uh, everything of his part of this plan just happens to fall in place I know people say oh he was improvising but come on even if he was improvising it's it's too much of a coincidence it's too lucky that everything just happens to happen to work for his plan it's, it's BS it's horrible writing so I think he is the worst villain. Anyway, let me get to my number 22, which is Malekith from Thor Dark World. Now, he's probably infamous for being one of the worst villains. I think Zemo's worse because he's like offensively written and it's just so contrived. But Malekith, his main offense is being boring. And he is a very generic, uninteresting, plain and simple <laughs> cliche villain that's just a stereotype archetype of every comic book super villain ever made and he has no death his backstory is not interesting you do not care the least bit about him now let me get to my number 21 so this is third worst villain and that is abomination from the incredible hulk um yeah, so this is... Marvel's done this a lot, and they'll come up soon <laughs> again. But they basically say, oh, let's make the villain just an inverse of the superhero and have them fight each other. So they basically, the villain has the same powers as the superhero and have a fight. Now, I realize this is from the comics, but still, uh, it's not very inspiring. And particularly in this movie, I think it was used particularly poorly like I didn't really I like Tim Roth as an actor but I didn't really buy this character that he would be willing to turn himself into a monster and some the, just the really clunky way they tried to introduce him like having that character say oh if you do this you'll be an abomination I'm like ugh and then, like the big CGI fight with him and the Hulk was just a blur of CGI that was not interesting so that's my number 21 my number 20 uh villain of the MCU is Yellow Jacket uh, or Darren Cross from Ant-Man. Now, I liked Ant-Man. I thought it was a really good movie, but I pointed out in my review of that movie that the low point of it was the villain. Because this villain is basically just a uh, 
a copy off of Ob <laughs> Obadiah Stane from Iron Man. It's basically the same thing. And he's... I mean, the actor who plays him is good enough, but the character himself is just a cliche villain. Ooh, I'm gonna kill this guy because he disagrees with me and shrink him. And, and it's just... And his, it's so obvious that, like, you know, because he's the business partner, which is why he's like Obadiah Stain, he's the business partner of Hank Pym in this case, and it's just so obvious that he's out to get him, and he's a villain. I know this movie doesn't try to hide it, but still, uh, there's no originality to him. Uh, he's flat, two-dimensional. So, we'll get to my number 19, which is Whiplash. Now, from Iron Man 2. So Whiplash is, I thought he was fine, but he's kind of, I mean, they did give him a backstory and they gave him some characterization, but then they did nothing with that. And instead he just pulled on another Iron Man suit at the end. I'm like, come on, again? <laughs> You're gonna have two Iron Mans fight again? And of course, the Iron Man 2 was just, that movie was just a mess. It was all over the place. So Whiplash's story just did not work. It was not cohesive. They just sent a lot of time, spent a lot of time setting up and saying why he would be mad at Tony Stark and then did nothing with it. So anyway, getting to my number 18, which is Thanos. Uh, <laughs> I know so many people may be uh, outraged uh, at the fact that I have Thanos, and this is from Avengers Infinity War, by the way, uh, so low on my list, but uh, I just really don't think uh, Thanos worked. He was the, one of the main problems I had with Infinity War, which I know critics thought he was the best thing ever, and they were really up his ass and saying, oh, I love Thanos. But to me, as I talked about this before, it's basically the Superman problem, but with villains. This is that he's too powerful, uh, so it's it makes it uninteresting uh, when he's not defeated. Because, of course, he's not. They just made him too. Particularly when they gave him the reality stone, he could just turn people to slinkies. It, it just blew, it blew the whole movie for me because I couldn't believe that they were even struggling with this guy anymore. But then other cases where the heroes could have easily beat him the the script contrived it so that they wouldn't. So it was just, I just felt his whole execution was that he was flat. I didn't really, I, his whole thing about wanting to wipe out uh, half of humanity, so because, or half of the world's pop or universe's population, uh, so that they'll have more resources. It's, this, it's actually been done like a billion times in modern movies. It seems like every villain's doing this now. And plus, I just, I don't particularly think it's powerful. I don't think it's betrayal here was particularly powerful. That's just me. Anyway, get into my number 17, which is King Lofi, I think he's called, from Thor, uh, because I, um, I have Loki for a different movie, so I counted him. He's like, you know, the pale dude that Loki makes a deal with and to do evil shit. I, I barely even remember this guy. I don't have anything to say about him. He's just kind of there. Anyway, so I'll just move on over to my number 16, which is Ronan the Accuser from Guardians of the Galaxy. Again, this was another sort of just generic blue guy just there to be like, oh, I'm evil and I'm going to kill you. Now, I know some people might take issue with me putting him higher than Thanos, but to me, Thanos had a whole slew of issues. Again, how they executed it with this to making him too powerful and it not making sense. Rodan didn't really have those issues, but he, he was just not interesting. You know, he was just a generic super villain spouting out evil things. Ooh. So, not very well done. All right. Then we get into my number 15, which is Red Skull. Now, I'm all for making Nazis villains. I think that does make a lot of sense. But Red Skull in particular, and I love Hugo Weaving, don't get me wrong. But Red Skull in particular, in his portrayal here, he did come off as a bit over the top. Uh, and uh, I don't know, for especially for the World War II setting, and especially having like the Red Skull, I don't know. It was okay. It was fine, but I didn't think it was that great. Anyway, we'll get into my number 14, which is Aldrich Killian from Iron Man 3. Now, some people might be surprised I had him this high on this list, but uh, I thought he was okay. I mean, he was a bit, again, cliche villain twirling his mustache sort of thing, but I like, and of course, his whole backstory about him being upset with Tony Stark for not uh, 
not agreeing with, not buying his plan or agreeing with him is a bit over the top <laughs> that he would turn into super villain. But he was kind of menacing, and, and his minions who could like turn into fire or whatever. So they did a somewhat decent job with him. Anyway, uh, we'll get into my number 13 next, which is Ego uh, from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Now, having a whole planet be a villain was definitely an interesting <laughs> way to go. And, you know, they had somewhat success with that. Like, the whole story about him being uh, Star-Lord's father was interesting enough. And, of course, having Kurt Russell play him was definitely a big plus. But again, like, he just, I don't know, he seemed to be like, oh, I love you, son, and told he wasn't. Until all of a sudden, I'm evil, you know, it, it just seemed to not really come off uh, all that well. So, number 12 on my list is Jan Rog uh, from Captain Marvel, and he an okay villain, I would say. I mean, because it was interesting that he was presented as the mentor to Captain Marvel, but you found out that he was kind of the villain all along, and his turn from being that mentor character to the villain character, I thought was pulled off quite well. Like, it was in keeping with this character. It didn't seem out of place, uh, such as uh, what I mentioned with the ego just now. So, uh, I'm, but he wasn't, there wasn't much to him. Like, he wasn't one that, a, a really great villain or anything, but he was fine. Anyway, we'll get to my number 11, which is Hela from Thor Ragnarok. Now, I love Thor Ragnarok, one of my favorite MCU movies. But Hela, like, she was good. Don't get me wrong. But again, she was kind of one note. I'm going to take over the galaxy. But it kind of fits in the Thor world. And I think the way Ragnarok used her worked well. Uh, she was very menacing. I think they were very good at accomplishing that. And Kate Blanchett was, of course, having a blast playing her. So, yeah, so not a bad villain at all. She was, she was good. Good. Anyway, time to get to my top ten. Top ten favorite villains. I'll start with my number ten, which is alternate Thanos. Now, <laughs> if you are upset with me for putting Thanos in number 18... Uh, for the Avengers Endgame, I actually considered alternate Thanos a different uh, a different villain. I know it's a bit of a cheat there, but I thought he was used much, much better in Endgame. And this different version of Thanos uh, from the from an, uh, the past, which is basically becomes an alternate universe. Um, and because he is a lot more menacing, and he doesn't have the Superman problem that Thanos did in Infinity War, because he didn't have any of the stones, uh, and his plot line wasn't as contrived, it was a bit more straightforward, uh, but he still had that motivation that was kind of iffy, but I thought he was much more menacing here, much better used. Anyway, uh, we'll get to my number nine, which is, uh, if I pronounce this correctly, which I probably won't, Kelsius from uh, Doctor Strange. Now, Mads Nicholson is a very menacing actor, so it was, or he does a good job. And so it was great to have him as a villain. And I think, even though he was kind of one note, his motivation was very believable, and that he would be this cult-like status who thinks this super villain uh, Dormammu, which I didn't count because he wasn't really the villain. I mean, he was the main bad guy who appeared at the end, but really is Kelsius throughout most of the movie. But, uh, yeah, the way he, like, worshipped him and, like, the way he would call Mr. Doctor and stuff like that. It was just a, he was a good villain. I think he worked well. Next, we'll get to my number eight, uh, which is Obadiah Stane uh, from Iron Man. I actually liked Obadiah Stane in Iron Man. I think even though it was kind of really predictable that he was a bad guy and he ends up putting on another Iron Man suit for Iron Man to fight. Although this is the first time they did it. This is the first MCU movie so I'll give him a little bit of a pass on that one. But he was a very convincing, and I love Jeff Bridges and his portrayal of him. Tony Stark was able to build us in a cave! Like, that was an amazing line. He's just a very menacing villain, so... Uh, yeah, like him. Anyway, we'll get to my number seven, uh, which is the director, 
or uh, Alexander Pierce, if you prefer, from Captain America Winter Soldier. I loved Winter Soldier, and I think this was a very good fitting uh, villain for that great uh, for that film. It was very menacing. You could buy his motivation, you can buy his power, and how deceptive he was. Uh, he was very menacing at the end when he just tried to kill the other people on the, on the board of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, and he was a very hard person to get by. So yes, definitely top 10 material, Alexander Pierce. So next we'll get to my number six, which is actually Ultron. Now, I didn't think Avengers Age of Ultron was that great of a movie. It was okay. But I said even then, the main issue is it tried to do too many things at once. It was telling, it was telling too many stories at the same time. But the best, one of the best things about that film, maybe the best thing about that film, was definitely Ultron. I think the way they played him was incredibly menacing. I mean, you, you bought him as a character, but the way they modulated his voice, and I think James Spader did an amazing voice acting job uh, with that. He was like totally creepy and the way like because he's supposed to be kind of based off of Tony Stark so the way he had Tony Stark's wit but in a very evil menacing way was very believable and extremely well done and in a lot of cases just funny sometimes and it really enhanced this villain so I actually thought this was a pretty great villain so next we'll get to my number five uh, which is Killmonger from uh, Black Panther now, a lot of people love this villain. I do as well. I think if, as far as motivation and background go, uh, he's one of the best in the MCU. He's definitely the best because of you can identify with him a lot more than most of these villains, which I mentioned, which are just evil and twirl or mustache war. Killmonger was not. I mean, sure, he does do some really... You know, typical villain shit, like just kill his girlfriend and just kill the people he work with so he can get what he wants. But you see that there's a greater motivation behind it, that he's just had that trauma as a child and he has lived a, a rough life due to being in the military and it's led him down a different path. So I, I do think this is a great character, but he makes my top five not higher because I do think they kind of sometimes when he is menacing when he needs to be the villain to black panther it does seem a little forced and maybe they could have done more to build that part of it like i get i think his motivation part was done amazingly well which is why he's a side but i think maybe they could have flushed him out a little bit more but anyway get to my number four which is loki a lot of people uh, and this is from Loki from The Avengers, is what I'm saying. A lot of people say that Loki is the best villain in the MCU. And I, he's definitely top five for me. He, he's played very well. He's written well. Uh, he's very... You, again, you buy his behavior that he's just, you know the god of deception, basically. And he plays himself really well. And uh, he's very menacing. And they humanize him a lot. like Because he actually does have some brotherly love for Thor and he actually does love his mother and his father and you see that come into play but and the way he tricks people and sometimes he teams up with them like done really well so I definitely see why this is a really high highly regarded villain so next we'll get to my number three which may surprise some people which is Ghost from Ant-Man and the Wasp. I think Ghost was one of the best. Actually, watching that movie again, I realized it was much better than I remember. It's Ghost, is, and it's mainly for Ghost, who's an amazing villain, because like Killmonger, as a villain that you can identify with and you can kind of relate to, even though she does villainous things. I personally think that they did a slightly better job of fleshing out this character and her backstory and making not only her motivations believable, but also why she would be particularly trying to kill, I believe it was Hank, Hank Pym's wife in this case, because she's dying and she's in extreme pain. And I think that uh, relationship she had she had with the Lawrence Fishburne character was done so well. So I actually thought this was a great villain. All right, so next we'll get to my number two, uh, which is Mysterio. Um, from Spider-Man Far From Home. I, Mysterio, I, I'm a bit of a bias towards Mysterio. I love Mysterio <laughs> even when I was reading the comics when I was a teenager. And so I couldn't wait to see Mysterio be in the movie. But they did such a great job with them. I mean, especially Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal gave such an amazing performance. It reminded me a lot of his performance in Nightcrawler, the way he, he comes off as a sociopath, basically. And his performance, I mean, not only is this 
character believable, but his performance was just like so good. And plus, like, talk about a menacing character. The way they use him when he uses illusions and they have those sequences where Spider Man is like seeing all these illusions and stuff was just amazing it was so good so so some of the best that uh that the mcu has done so next we'll get into my number one favorite villain of the mcu and i'm keeping with spider-man i'm going with vulture uh, from spider-man homecoming uh michael keaton is amazing and I think Michael Keaton's performance in this film as Vulture is amazing. Now, one of the things I love about Vulture, particularly as compared to other villains like Thanos or Red Skull or Ego or Ronan the Accuser, is Vulture isn't this over-the-top, really powerful bad guy that the heroes have to struggle, struggle to beat. He's just a dude. He's just a guy who's like smuggling weapons, who's selling weapons on the black market because he's been screwed in the past. And he's just trying to provide for his family. And I love that. See, to me, you don't have to make the stakes so high. You don't have to make the stakes be, oh, half the universe is going to die or there's this huge planet coming to fight us. You can just have some do because the stakes are only ever as high as they are for the characters. And for Spider-Man, the stakes were really high. He had to prove himself to Tony Stark, and then he found out the girl he was dating, the, her father, was in fact the villain. I mean, I gotta talk about the scene in the car, which I think is one of the best scenes ever, ever, where um, not only like does Peter Parker know that, that uh, her that his uh, date's father is uh, the villain, but he figures this out. And in that moment when he starts, I look at Michael Keaton's performance here, when he figures out that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, was just so intense. It was one of the most intense scenes because it's all played in subtly as well. It was just so damn good. And again, this is a character I think you can relate to the most. So this is my number one favorite villain of the MCU is Vulture. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this. I'll remind you this is, of course, just my opinion. You may have different opinions on which villains you like. You're welcome to leave them in the comment section below, but this is just how I feel. And so this concludes my coverage of the MCU. Thank you so much. I'll be sure to cover any more MCU movies that come out in the future and whatnot. So be sure to check out my channel as I cover many other shows uh, like The Expanse, Star Trek, and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.